Hello everyone, I'm going to share my top tips with you guys for World War Z that can be applied generally to any mission or mode. Knowledge is power and I'm here to make you strong. So get your learning hats on and let's dragon up. He's gonna stop his enemies with his dragon power. Dragon teeth, dragon tail, burning dragon fire. Real live wire, American dragon. dragon As I just said, knowledge is power. The best way to complete missions on higher difficulties is to learn the maps. Extreme mode does not offer many, if any, objective markers, and you have no minimap either, so you better know the map fairly well. Play the maps a few times on hard or even easy if you have to before moving on to insane or extreme mode. There was a time I was trying to help a guy complete Jerusalem 2 on extreme mode, and the other two players didn't know where to find the car parts, so they weren't being very helpful, and after two failed attempts on extreme, we ran it once on hard, I showed them every spawn point for all of the car parts, and then once we cleared it, we did again on extreme, and we finished it on the first try. So do yourselves and the people you're playing with a favor, learn the maps. Never go solo. Always travel in a full group of four or in pairs just in case someone gets caught by a lurker. Use melee and silenced weapons throughout most of the map. Guns without suppressors and waking up zombies either by sprinting near them or by shooting them in the body causes more noise and will alert surrounding zombies. And if enough zombies are awakened, a mini horde and special zombies will spawn causing you even more trouble. So make sure to go slow and aim for the head. There was a time I was in a group with two other people trying to carry another player through extreme mode and the other two just kept sprinting past all the zombies on the floor, spawning hordes, and making me and the newbie have to defend ourselves from all sides, instead of slowly clearing a path. Needless to say, we ran the mission over and over with no success. If you can't solo and carry, don't sandbag your teammates that you're claiming to help. The only time you should be sprinting through an area where you'd normally stealth is when you have a fixer on the team with masking grenades and he can mask the entire party. Sometimes, even if you're quiet, the game can throw a random horde at you, or there are scripted areas that you have to defend against hordes, and in those cases, it's okay to be loud. In those cases, use defense kits and heavy weapons. I played hundreds of missions and horde mode games where people forget to use the heavy artillery and just continue to use their primary weapon, and then we get overrun and fail the mission or lose the weight we shouldn't have. Always remember the option of using heavy weaponry when you're faced with a horde. If you don't have any heavy weaponry or they're just stuck in a bad spot because you got overrun, you need to fall back on your primary or even secondary weapon. When that happens, you need to be able to quickly reload it to keep the horde off and drive them back. Your weapons actually finish reloading at the halfway mark. You can cancel the rest of the reload animation by performing certain actions. The tier 1, tier 2, and compact shotguns have an extra animation to close their breach or ejection port, and it can be cancelled by simply firing the shotgun. The most common way to quick reload is by slashing or quick swapping weapons, but you can also do that by dropping down or climbing up ledges. Quick swapping is the fastest way, but if zombies are in your face, slashing would be better to help you get some distance. That brings me to tip number 5. If you're not a slasher and you're playing on insane or extreme difficulty, killing zombies takes two melee attacks. Not to mention, if a zombie gets in your face, there are probably a few more right behind it ready to eat your brains when you run out of melee stamina. You only have so many swings in you before you get tired. Even if you're a slasher and you don't slow down, you start hitting less zombies and you no longer do double damage with your melee attacks. So you won't be one-shotting any regular zombies on insane or extreme difficulty. A single slash will make all of the zombies in front of you stumble and give you enough time to reload your gun and mow them down as well as all of the other ones immediately behind them. Too many slashers fall into the trap of slashing non-stop with their regular melee weapon just because they don't slow down when they are fatigued and they completely forget that they have a gun or chainsaw at their disposal, don't fall into this trap. As a slasher, you should think of your melee weapon as a close range secondary weapon. Let your energy recharge after a few swings and use your primary weapon. There's a reason why it's called the primary weapon. Every class has a role in the game. If there's a medic on the team, you're not the medic and the medic doesn't have a medkit, let the medic pick up the next medkit you see. If there's a Hellraiser, let them pick up the MGL, fixers get first dibs on semi-automatic rifles, etc. You can ping pretty much everything in the game with the default key T. When everyone plays to their strengths, the team is stronger as a whole. Another thing that makes a strong team is communication. Join the official World War Z Discord server to find lots of people who play the game and join them in voice chat. Link to the Discord server will be down in the description. While you're playing with them, make sure you play with people who are near the same region of the world as you are so that you have a decent ping. Many of the maps like to spawn hordes of zombies in front and a few in the back or on the sides. When possible, perhaps while you're stuck in half of your reload animation, quickly check your back so that a couple of stray zombies don't down your entire team. You should do this by pivoting and not running around. This isn't a game where enemies are shooting back at you, so don't strafe like you're trying to dodge bullets. You're more likely to get hit by friendly fire that way, and boy does it hurt when you're on higher difficulties. 
I was playing horde mode on normal difficulty, and I was going pretty much full auto with the assault shotgun, and we had explosive ammo, and my teammate who was helping me watch my platform ran and right in front of me and took every pellet from one shot, and went from 100% health down to less than 25% health. If we were playing horde on hard mode, or a mission on extreme mode, he would have been down. I could not emphasize this more! Stop strafing! Besides just looking behind you, try looking over your shoulder, it's super useful for shooting around teammates if they're in the way, and checking corners for lurkers before they find you. The default key to look over your shoulder is X. Sometimes knowledge can only get you so far, even if you know all these tips, if you're only level 1 and you haven't upgraded any of your weapons, you're probably still going to have a difficult time on extreme difficulty. Think of it like training both mentally and physically, so grind out some levels, and when you're good and ready, you too can have the extreme sniper. Just don't level up artificially like having people carry you or grinding experience by doing the stupid EXP and credit farms by dying over and over after the first checkpoint of a map or hacking your save files because the journey of leveling up and learning the maps are what make you exceptionally strong. I played with several people who have level 999 accounts, max out weapons and skins, and they are still somehow worse than bots. Gaming experience is almost always better than experience points, but max out guns and class skills can still be useful Unless you're friendly firing a lot, then a stronger weapon can actually be detrimental. If you guys are still watching by this point, thank you very much, and here are a few more bonus tips that I thought were pretty close to being top 10. You don't have to kill every single zombie in the game, and you don't need to loot all the items in the map either. Sometimes prolonging your stay to loot items may make you lose more resources in the end. A fixer with a messing grenade in certain portions of missions can be game changing. You don't want to play cross-platform because people from other platforms can't communicate with you besides pinging items and shooting you in the face to get your attention. Xbox players can't see PC players' chat messages and they can't hear in-game voice chat either. In the options, you can choose to turn off cross-platform play or you can choose to play online private so that randoms don't join you either. This is pretty obvious, but there are so many instances of people just running around and ignoring the immediate threat near them, trying to outsprint the zombies. Have you seen World War Z zombies? They just sprint forever. Besides the fact that it's futile to outrun them without any obstacles, if you let zombies get into your space and you don't deal with them, your teammates will likely friendly fire to kill the zombies. I'll make this easy to remember. Keep your station clear or I will kill you! Your ears are freaking amazing. They let you know things are there without even seeing them. Memorize the sound cue that each special zombie makes so that the moment you hear them breathe, grunt, screech, or whatever, you can get ready to react to them. There are so many times my teammates just only focus on the hordes of regular zombies and don't recognize that a bull, lurker, or bomber has spawned, and by the time they see it, they can't shoot it down and they get pinned or blown up. Character banter is another great sound cue to listen to. Without even pinging things, the characters might say, look out, enemy mines, or stay quiet, lurker is around, or something along those lines. That's all for this video, guys. I hope you liked it. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to help me reach my 1000 subscriber goal if you haven't already subscribed. I'll be making specific guides for each mission and class next, so please make sure you click the bell for notifications when they come out. I also have a Discord you can join if you want to play with me or have any questions. Link is in the description. Thank you all for watching, and remember, I will always love you.